I surrender. I surrender. We love our life around here. We have put this giant walnut log onto the Wood Miser LT15 wide. It's been sitting here for a couple days and it looks as if it might have disleveled the deck on the Wood Miser just because I have it just on the dirt here. So it's kind of settled to where it wanted to be. So what I'm doing is reestablishing a level, level platform. And this is going to be amazing because what this is going to do is allow our uh, saw blade to actually cut a straight cut instead of one of these woo woo type deals. Um, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, this is going to be a big old boy. We're going to get her cut up. She's looking at about uh, 16 plus feet long. We're just going to play around with her. You know, I've, I hear a lot of people saying, hey, man, you should cut these things into like dimensional lumber or quarter song or get more money. But you know what? I'm not in this business for money. I'm in this business because I love the wood and I love the log. You know, if I slab it up, woodworker can make whatever he wants out of it. He can do all the other hard work. This is just giving them an opportunity to have some material to work with. You know, um, but that's where I see it. Leave some comments and things like that down below. So what can cause the mill to move? The uh, weight of this log, like I said, um, what we're standing here are these little jack, little platform arm deals. You know, I had just stuck it here in the dirt and I've milled up many of the logs on it, but I think this is by far one of the largest that I've had on here. Uh, besides the sister to that big oak, this is the big sister to the other oak tree oak log why do i say tree maybe because it still is a tree or is it a log technically after it's been cut can it still be a tree i don't know comments below anyways this is the sister half of the oak tree which was the biggest log that i've put on the wood miser so far and we cut god surfboards out of it we got about one two three four five six maybe pretty thick slabs all at about three to four inches thick. And I'm not gonna ever do that again unless I really have a, a machine to move stuff. We finished uh, leveling out the deck. Looking good still. We actually uh, leveled out the log too. Raised it so it's gonna be a little more, you know, straight running through. Raised that one tapered end up to be centered with this center here on this end. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I already kind of got a, a decent blade on there, but I'm going to try to run, cut the couple top strips loose, and then we're going to start slabbing it up and putting it on the trailer so we can stack it. Few moments later. Chad R. Peppers, two corn dogs, a Route 44 cherry limeade, easy ice. Uh, we're back now. We took a break. How about we set it right at 24 inches? Round one! <laughs>
So we got our first little layer cut off here. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this tree. Uh, tornadoes came in to Nashville and um, took out a bunch of people's houses and all kinds of stuff and a lot of trees too. A lot of trees took out a lot of people's houses and uh, right here in my own little neighborhood of Donaldson, people had all kinds of trees down and we came out to the rescue. It was before I even had a mill and uh, we got lucky enough to have been gifted some trees in uh, return for just helping out. And it was like, you know, I've always been a woodworker and to actually get the trees and go, oh, uh, what am I gonna do with it? How are we gonna process it and turn it into actual lumber that we can use to make furniture, or just whatever, you know? Things of beauty, things with a story, things that might mean something to somebody, things of necessity, things that, you know, can change our lives. This is a, a black walnut, it looks yellow right there. Like, let's take a look at this little first piece we got going. It's hard to got some sort of this is own unique beauty and just that little piece. I always really like that little yellowish color that comes on the first little cuts of these. And now we're gonna change the blade. Pull the tension on that. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. I'm thinking about it. Hopefully you don't need it today. I love getting this stuff off because a lot of times It'll make the blade jump a little weird. Sometimes it'll just, sometimes things will just move like that and your blade could be on it and it actually touches it and it'll deflect it up or down. Or, but you, mainly because it dulls out the blades. A lot of times there's dirt and all that crud in there. And, Cutting into this walnut log and it's really starting to take shape. If we ain't ghetto, nobody's ghetto. Look at that bucket, Bubba. It's a double strapper. Double strap that one with cheese. Y'all get ready for this. Well, me and Phillip's getting ready for this. We gotta lift it over there. Two and a quarter on the bucket. 
So that's nine quarter. Is that what they'd call that? Pretty wide for down here. It's looking at about 20. What we're gonna do here is, uh, well, Philip and I, we had this great notion of trying to get the scale of these boards. And I think he mentioned that, man, we should stand it up straight. So we're gonna stand it up straight. We cut us a couple good little slabs off of the cool tornado victim log, black walnut. We're gonna stack it, let it get good for a while, and put it in the kiln dryer. And until next time, we'll keep making tree powder. So subscribe. <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs> Subscribe.